Hi, my name's Jack Rebold. I'm the owner for 20 years of Arizona Tractor Sales in Phoenix, Arizona. I want to take a few minutes with you and just talk in generalities about the operation of a tractor. Nothing specific to a model, just generalities. This is what's called a front end loader on a tractor. Most of the stuff we sell encompasses a front end loader. It's got a bucket on it, and that's to pick up all kinds of different materials that you might would need to do, whether it be rocks, gravel, whether it be dirt, moving dirt, whether it be uh, in your arena, moving hay around, this kind of stuff. On the back of most tractors, you have a box scraper, commonly called a box scraper or box blade, or another word is gannon. Basically, this is the most important universal tool or implement on tractors. It's primarily used as a counterweight for whatever you might have in your loader for you to be safe and keep the rear tires solidly on the ground for traction. The real purpose is to be able to work your roads, your pathways, to scrape them, to pick up the dirt and redistribute it in the low spots on the road, such as your potholes. On going back to the loaders real quick, you generally have on a loader two different kinds of control valves. You either have a two-stick control or a single stick, which is called a joystick. This particular model is set up with a two-stick control, one to raise and lower the loader, one to tilt the bucket up and or down, as the case may be. Most loaders that you'll find in the market will have a two-stick control unless they're a very, very new model. Then it would be the other option, which is the joystick. The basics of starting a tractor, just real quick, is most tractors since 1969 are diesel, unless you're talking about the little yard and garden products. So that means that in the colder country, you would have to preheat this thing to get it to start effectively. Summertime, it's not an issue. On most tractors, you take the key and you turn it to the left. The key is generally spring loaded. And what that does is that activates the uh, glow plugs within the tractor to heat the engine up prior to you starting it. Then in most tractors, again, you have a lever on the side here, which you have to open to get the fuel to flow. You put the clutch in, you put the tractor in neutral as a safety issue, and start it like you would a car. This lever here then is your speed control, if you will, trying to translate it to something that most people will recognize, such as in a car. Additionally to this speed control, down on the lower side here by your brakes, most tractors have some kind of a foot throttle. Don't want to call it a gas pedal because it is a diesel tractor, not a gasoline uh, a tractor. Now, all tractors have what's called split brakes. And there's a lever back here that allow this brake and or this brake to operate independently. When you're row cropping, this can be a real nice asset. When you are using a loader, for safety reasons, you want to keep this locked together so that you don't have the possibility of flipping the tractor by hitting one brake pedal or the other. This falls into a safety issue. Most tractors have a range lever. A range lever can be one low range and that's it, or it can have multiple ranges. This tractor, an example, has three different ranges. What that means is, is that not only do you have the gear shifter that could be three or four gears, you would have a range plus those three or four gears. If you had two ranges or three or four, that would multiple, multiply your forward uh, gearing and your reverse gear. So you're saying you basically go from a four speed transmission to an eight speed or 12 speed, depending on how many ranges there are, right? Correct. Okay. Correct, correct. And that's where your power is, is in the ranges and the gear selection. If Got you're going to go from point A to point B and you want to get there in a hurry, then you would put it in high gear, high range, and go. Because you're not shifting on the fly with a standard type transmission. Right. Okay. And that way you can go all 10.2 miles an hour downhill with a tailwind. <laughs> okay. A lot of your tractors have two cylinder engines, three and some four. Every manufacturer started out with a two-cylinder engine and those are still extremely popular and then some graduated to a three and now as we see some four cylinders that are coming onto the market in the newer stuff 
don't let that be a deciding uh, factor in your decision to buy. Does uh, the number of cylinders have anything to do with the power of the tractor? No. Power is power, mm -hmm. horsepower is horsepower, torque is torque. Okay. All right, cool. It's just one thing that I, I do tell customers to explain the difference is that a two-cylinder sounds like tennis shoes in a dryer. A three-cylinder, <laughs> you can hear your cell phone, but you can't effectively talk on it. A four-cylinder, everybody can call you. It's like a golf cart. Ring. Yeah. Got it. Okay. All right, so uh, on operating this tractor, what about this front end loader here? How does, uh, what are the safety things for this? How much can I haul with it? Okay, on this particular model, which is basically a, a 16 horse, three cylinder diesel, if you notice the bucket on this one, this is a three and a half foot wide bucket. Typically buckets come in three and a half, four, up to six foot wide. They may be deeper, taller but they still have that same kind of a width factor to get through gates and things of that nature. Now this particular tractor because of its size and the size of the bucket there's different kinds of weight. Most dealers aren't going to tell you this but there is how much gravel can you get in a bucket like this if you filled it to the edge. Then there's the lift that you could have if you hooked a chain on the edge of the bucket and you were trying to lift up a platform of some sort. For example picking up an engine block. That's a different weight that the tractor can do. Then there's a third weight, and that is if you put forks on the bucket. So, as an example, if you fill this three and a half foot bucket, up, three and a half foot bucket up full, it'll pick up 375 pounds of gravel. If you were doing the dead weight lift, you'd have about 500. If you put forks on it, now you go backwards, you're about 400. Okay. The further that you get your material out in front of the tractor because of physics, the less you'll be able to lift. That makes sense, because counterbalance. Well, it's the counterbalance and it's the ability of the pump also okay. to pick that up. Okay, so this would be a good tractor to use like for emptying stalls out, hauling manure, lightweight stuff, right? Correct. This would be perfect for somebody with one to three acres that wanted to muck out stalls, work your arena, do light landscape work around the property, disc an acre, mow an acre, work your driveway, those kinds of concepts. This size bucket or even a four foot bucket will get you into a stall relatively easy to clean and muck. Oh, sounds good. Our most popular tractor that we sell in this class of machine, because there's many different classes, is an 18 horse, four wheel drive, four foot, four foot front loader, and a four foot box scraper because that fits the horse community perfect. Excellent. Okay, good. Now, uh, can you go ahead and uh, start this up and show us how to actually fire up the tractor and operate the front and back end of it? Uh, can do. Focus on your back. Okay, so that's the, the rear end, and for the front end loader, that's your raising and lowering level lever. Okay. And this is going to be your tilting lever. You get Excellent. A, you get a picture of that. Anytime you are stopping the tractor and leaving it, you always want to put your hydraulics down to the ground. Don't leave them in the air. It puts undue stress on the seals of your hydraulics. And also, because hydraulics will drift down, because hydraulics will drift down, you could have an animal caught under there, getting in there, get some shade, and that could drift down and kill him. Okay. So it just comes back down to common sense safety. Okay. Now, I noticed when you shut it down, you push the throttle all the way forward. It wasn't just turn off the key. Is that... Uh, if you don't turn the throttle down, will it keep running or what? In, in, this, in this kind of a situation, the answer is yes. If you don't shut the fuel off, you could turn the key off and it still would run. Okay. So what I tell people that have this kind of a, of a setup is turn the key off first, like you would a car, and say, gee, what's wrong with this pitcher? Oh, yes, I've got to shut the fuel off to kill it. 
If you do it in reverse, you can shut it off, but the electricity, the electrical parts keep running. Right, so tr diesel tractors don't run on electricity, they run on pressure then, right? Well, they and run. fuel. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're different than a car, yes. I mean, okay. you've got to have the electricity on, you've got to have the ignition on right. to be able to activate the battery, the starter, etc. Right, but once it starts... Once it starts, you can turn the key off and throw the key away, it's going to continue to run. Got it. Well, we don't want that. No. Okay, so, uh, say I want to get one of these tractors, what do I do, Jack? Well, basically, you give me a call, 602-377-2850. And uh, if you don't know what you want, I'll help you do that. The, the saying that I've said for so many years, for 20 years, is 20 years ago I didn't know how to spell tractor. Now I are one. <laughs> and because of that, I get great pride and privilege to try to help people figure out what's best for them. Cool. Now, uh, do you have a website I can go to to take a look at uh, range? Do you have a lot of tractors online or what? We have a lot of tractors online, uh, several hundred pages online about our business, how we operate, etc. cetera. Um, and basically that's AZ, the abbreviations for Arizona, aztractorsales.com. Great, well thank you very much, Jack. I appreciate your time. My pleasure.